My house is probably about the size of your normal cubicle. No kitchen, bathroom in the hallway. It's called the Single Room Occupancy SRO Hotel. You gotta eat in this room, you gotta bathe in this room, you gotta work in this room. You have to live your whole life in this room. No matter where I go, housing is cheaper, but minimum wage is lower, so it's still the same. You know, I mean, it's still a blessing because I definitely didn't have anywhere else to go, so. Yo de un la idea que yo tengo es que simplemente con que tienda la cama, ya se ve que está todo bien. I made up some words this weekend. The one I came up with was the suplexor cyst. That's the art of kicking your own inner demon's ass. Everyone knows that you were acting in self-defense. If you don't get a decent offer, then we have to take it to trial. For me, being a recovering addict, it hurts me to know that my kid, no needle, you know? When I was a kid, it was like, squirrel! <laughs> my daughter, she ran away from a residential treatment facility. The longer I don't have housing that fits all of us so long as she stays out in the streets. We literally have to become millionaires, I guess. <laughs>Thank you guys. Yeah, no, we're happy to be here. Me too. For sure. Um, okay, so we'll start. The name of the name of the documentary is called "Home Is a Hotel." It's it is a product of uh, filmmaker Kevin Duncan Wong. Um, yeah, Wong, right? Kevin yeah. Duncan Wong. And um, we are also joined by one of the subject subject. How many are there? About. Hey, how's it going? How many subjects are there? There are. Yeah. There's there's five households. So okay, five, five, five households, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and 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 our friend Sylvester here is uh inhabited one of those households, and as one of the storylines in the in your film, and it is about. I mean, you know, I'll set it up. You can always interrupt either of you guys, but it is essentially about uh, the high housing crisis. Uh, crisis. Um. I mean, in cities all over. Um, I mean, there's a housing crisis up here. I'm north of New York City, and there's a housing crisis. There are cities up here, too. They're much smaller than New York City or San Francisco or Oakland, but not by that much, you know. And then, so people are living in SROs, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so it's kind of like how how you navigate that whole world and and living in such a cramped situation and also what that does to you psychologically and otherwise and kevin you, uh rather i'm sorry uh well kevin you, you it's yeah. a great you really give great insight into it uh through your your subjects and and sylvester my also kudos to you for being so uh open and transparent and available and it's amazing yeah you were so uh present and uh, honest and available <laughs> thank yeah. you so i don't know I, have you guys how many screenings have you guys done and 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 sylvester were you have you been at screenings 
Yeah, yeah. so we've done a few. Um, so Sylvester was at the premiere, and then what we've done again? we did uh at San Francisco. So the world premiere was at the San Francisco International Film Festival. Oh, great! Uh, and so everybody was there, um, and including Sylvester. And then uh, we did like a small theatrical run in San Francisco after that. Okay. Um, Where was and that? So Sylvester was. That was at the Roxy Theater mm-hmm. in San Francisco, and Very then good. also mm-hmm. at the uh, the New Parkway in Oakland. And so Sylvester was at both of those screenings. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you want to talk, Sylvester? Do you want to talk about how you feel about the audience response to the film? It's been. Yeah, I mean, what was that like? To, uh, what were what was your response to their response, Sylvester? Because it that had to be something for new for you uh my response to their response was it was (laughs) it's always weird to see yourself up there on that screen for one and it it felt really supportive Uh, i didn't like feel out like like i was on display or anything i felt like i was part of the audience and also you know to get feedback it was just like i'm not i'm not I'm not some I'm not some pariah because I live in an SRO. How did you feel while you were living in the SRO though? Uh, I'm still in one and it still feels cramped. You know, there's a I'm about to move out of this one, by the way. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm moving currently. Uh I'm getting my stuff together. I'm going to an apartment. Yay. That is <laughs> but, a big yay. Yeah, yeah we're excited for you. Long. It's been a long time. You need time to have now. like a studio. I mean, a real yeah. student, you know, at home. Yes. Working. I got my painting like right here, <laughs> like right yeah. where I'm sitting. Do you want to give him a, so he, he, you're, you're still in the, that's, you're in your room at the Vincent, right? Do you want to give him a 360? <laughs> it's uh, just like all really, art supplies. Not really. I got like a lot of stuff in boxes right now. And okay. I'm, okay. It's, I understand. I understand. It's but it, so it, it hasn't been more. has it been? Um, I don't want to make I don't want to put words in your mouth. So I was gonna I was gonna ask you, has it been yada yada yada? But I'd rather hear what it's like for you. What has been the like your your journey? How long have you been in the SRO? I've been in the, this particular SRO going on five six years. That's a long and time. The, yeah, it's a very long time. But I was also, uh, it's a double edged sword because for one instance, it's like I got housing. And I was homeless for a while, right. but the other instance is, you know, uh, it's impossible to like do normal things, like go out on dates, <laughs> you know, uh, go to the bathroom in privacy, have privacy in your home. You know, like you can hear everything. I keep my fan going on just so I don't hear what. I'm right, doing. white noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it's it's one of those things where you you it's not really an accommodating space but it's a space nonetheless it it beats the ladder so you feel kind of uh you feel a little you feel a little bad for complaining <laughs> but you you still it, it's a hard experience it's a very hard experience so so yeah. when when how, t- tell me kevin maybe how you found sylvester i mean and i know there were like we say uh at least four other families or folks that you you also found um well it was the same process of elimination or you know maybe there were other people but sylvester's story certainly is um compelling yeah yeah so it was the same it was the same process in terms of how we found everybody in the film which was um we had worked with a community group that was based in Chinatown uh, on a short film about a woman and her daughter that were living in an SRO. I see. Um, and when we knew we wanted to make the feature length version of it and zoom out and sort of see other neighborhoods, we um, talked to them and asked them to introduce us to other community groups working in the other neighborhoods. And so that it was how we met. Uh, we got introduced to this organization called the Central City SRO Collaborative, uh, this woman named Baljeet. Um, and so we told them what we were doing and she was like, okay, like I have some people that I think you should meet. Um, uh, and one of the things that they would do is they would have these, uh, they call them block parties. Uh, and so basically they would get a permit from the city to just like block off a block in the neighborhood and like 
have music and feud and like food and like have a place for people to hang out because they don't have a lot of space in their rooms. Uh, and so uh, she invited me to one of those and Sylvester was there uh, and we sort of started talking. And uh, do you remember that? Do you remember meeting that at that uh, block party, Sylvester? Yeah, I remember you meeting you there. I remember meeting you there. <laughs> yeah. So what so I don't think? know what you thought. I Yeah. yeah tell I, me I, like, how said, what you hey, thought you when he film. proposed <laughs> this like, idea. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I was the community artist for the CCSROC for many years. And, you know, Baljeet helped me out with a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, you know, anytime Baljeet would say, yo, I need you to do something, I'll be right on it. And if she gave a good word for anybody, instantly good people. So when she introduced me to Kevin, it was just like, all right, where do you want me? <laughs> when do you want me? If Baljeet sent you, you must be a good person. So, you know. Yeah. I, it was it was awesome meeting him. You know, it was a little. <clears throat> I never felt like I was uh, intruded on. It, it always felt respectable. It felt dignified. It felt like my story was being told, and other people's stories were being told, and we weren't being afraid. Of it. Did you? So, you're talking about the actual process of making of being a subject in the documentary. You felt respected and dignified, and it was a dignified production. And did you have any sense of, of the other? Did you know any of these other uh, subjects in the in the documentary? I didn't know any of the other subjects in a documentary. I didn't know anybody else in there. You know, that's the weird part. When you finally see everybody on a film, you're kind of brought right. together. It's a sense of unity. <laughs> like we all had the same story. It was like, wow, I feel I never met you before, but it feels like I know you. Kevin, did you feel like Kevin comes across very open hearted? I'm, you know, again, I don't know. I only see what I see on the on the screen. Yeah, 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 but to me, he just has a warmth. And I'm not trying to kiss your butt. I'm just just saying how I <laughs> see it. You know, I mean, you know, just see somebody yeah. who's kind of, um, you know, trying to do better, trying to uh, be like, you know, just wants to do his art and be, you know, like just do his thing, and yeah, uh, and live a live a good life, you know, and nothing, yeah. you know, out of the ordinary. Um, and I'm just wondering, like the process of finding your subjects in this, you know, like what was required in your mind to tell the story that you wanted to tell? Yeah, well, so it's interesting because um, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who primarily works in narrative the other day about sort of like the similarities and differences between nonfiction and narrative. And I was saying that, you know, a lot of the initial process is actually pretty similar because when you're thinking about oh sure a person as a character right like if you if you're working on a narrative you're thinking about a character and like what does this character want where are they trying to go like what are their people talk about like wants and needs right as like and motivation and those kinds of things and so for us i think when we were meeting people that was kind of the same thing that we were looking for like we're looking you know there's you don't need to make a documentary to like show the horrible situation of like people struggling to find housing in San Francisco. All you have to do is turn on the nightly news you, and you can get that, right? Good point. What we wanted to show was sort of like a deeper and more human side to that, right? And like that the, there are people that people who are struggling have those wants and needs and sort of like finding people who are willing to share that with us, right? Um, was what we were looking for when we were meeting folks. And so- you know, when we met Sylvester, it was pretty apparent right away. You know, I feel like you've been saying you want to move out of Vanessa since I met you, Sylvester. Uh, and so I'm really excited that you're like, it's like finally sort of like, seems like it's close to happening. Because that we met what, like six, six or more years ago, and you sort of like been building towards that for a long time. But it was that and then also, you know, he really wanted to do something with his art, um, too. And that was like, you know, I of all the stories i think i probably relate to sylvester's the most being like an artist understanding the sort of like tension of you know you want to be an artist you want to make your living doing that but you know you got to do stuff to pay the bills and sort of how do you balance it all the sort of like things life throws at you and then you know in sylvester's case obviously the housing and the life circumstances complicate that even more um but yeah i mean that was really you know that was really what we were looking for is like we want to we want to sort of like celebrate 
the hopes and dreams, the things that people are moving towards in spite of the difficult circumstance and not dwell on the difficult circumstance as, as much as that's an important part of what the film is about. Mm. Yeah. It is not a political film and you know, it's, so it's not, yeah. An advocacy film necessarily. I mean, it's there, but it's not what's driving the film. What's driving the film are exactly what you just described. Just, Mm -hmm. you know, uh it's beautiful um and so with sylvester's story in particular there is a uh a, 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 right an event that occurs unexpectedly of course and i'm not going to talk about it in specifics because i think it's important for people to see the film and experience it themselves uh but we do wonder like i was wondering so sylvester was there a point during that whole part of your life and this you know the filmmaking where you thought maybe this is getting a a need like were you starting to have maybe second thoughts or or what was your experience i mean at that point and still knowing you're on camera and and we're not going to get too specific about the events i guess it's going to be tricky here i i could do this i got this uh The experience that I went through, you know, I don't think I couldn't have went through it with some better people. Okay. You know, they were very, very, very supportive as, as, to that. You know, they uh, they respected everything I went through, you know, even when in, the things that didn't make it on camera. Uh, I lost both of my parents during that. And <laughs> I lost a bunch of relatives. I lost my grandmother to COVID. I didn't want any of that filmed. Um, you know, but the particular in the big hoo-ha, you know, I didn't want it at first, but then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? People need to see this. It's not just really about people in SRO struggling. There is a lot of drug use in these places. There's a lot of mental illness. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of sociopolitical issues. So it's not just really about, you know, people being in poverty. It's about people that are in poverty that, you know have issues that keep them here Mm. it's it's not all just black and white like just get a job everybody just can't get a job you know it's a complicated issue it's a complicated spider web so i thought by like that happening it was really a bad situation but it needs to be seen i think i was put around the right people at the right time and I thank Kevin, Cayenne, Singh, and all of them for just being rocks that helped me make it through that. I couldn't have made it through that without them. I was real worried about you. <laughs> yeah. I really was. Like, you know, it yeah. seemed like you felt pretty hopeless at one point there. Who could blame you? And I don't know that I would have had as much fortitude to uh, overcome what you've you obviously overcome. But having those folks behind you, I, I guess I could see that that would be um um, immeasurably you know helpful to you so that's great that you got lucky that yeah this whole we we were worried we were worried about sylvester too for sure like all of those all of those court scenes like we were sitting right there in the in the in the back row like going through it like experiencing it uh the way that you do in the film so it was very much Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very much a yeah, yeah, uh, an yeah. experience for us as well, for sure. Wow. But yeah, yeah, I'm. I you, mean, I, I feel super realize... honored that Sylvester allowed us to be there for him in that way, and and yeah, like he said, we sort of like had some serious conversations about what are we gonna do? Do you want this out in the world? Um, but he decided he wanted his story told. So, yeah. um, I also yeah. think that we caught a era too we kind of caught an era because during that time the black lives matters was in full swing we had riots going on down here we just got trump as a president <laughs> everything yeah. good like, times good times it, yeah i was i was scared shitless like oh my god all this shit had to go down while i'm going through my stuff please <laughs> just <let's... laughs> yeah 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 oh. it was george floyd oh, oh my god oh my god right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I got a things were, about it. Yeah, things <laughs> things were uh boiling, right? Yeah, boiling yeah. up everywhere. Uh uh Kevin also, even though I, I think this isn't a very uh 
I, I don't think of it as a political film, but it's there, of course, because you are there is a you know uh, housing crisis, poverty, um, other things that Sylvester just mentioned, like mental illness and and drugs, often not often you know to kind of bound together those things, mm -hmm. but um, so it's inherently there is a political nature to it because you know we have to have policies to fix these things. I mean, um, yeah. <clears throat> and so I'm just wondering if if that is a, a plan. I know you've got the Austin. Um, hold on one second. Yeah, the Austin Film Festival. You're going to be showing it. So if my friends down in Texas, or specifically Austin, October 29th, you're going to be showing the film at the San Diego Asian Film Festival. We do know one of the uh, subjects uh, is a, a, a Asian mother, and. Yes. Um, and so that's and 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 the genesis of the film was a short version. I'm assuming it was the short film version was around her. It was it was actually a different a different okay. woman living okay. in a, in an astro in Chinatown. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it'll be at the San Diego Asian Film Festival on November uh, Film Festival on November eighth, and then it will be premiering in L.A. on November nineteenth at the New Filmmakers Los Angeles Docu Slate. Yes. Wow. That's just yes. That's, that's just the, to start. But I'm thinking. This thing could also have a quite an impact institutionally, educationally speaking, and you know, and I think yeah. people really, really connect to it. Yeah, totally. I mean, so I'd say that the the goals of the film are certainly social. I don't know if you want to call them political or not. I don't necessarily think of myself as someone who's <laughs> super political. I mostly just care about people. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I sort of it's like wanted flaw. to. It's bring just a that. flaw in your character. You can't help yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, and so you know, I think that was kind of what we want. What we were trying to do with the film is sort of like get past. Uh, like, if you start a film with talking about policy, I think that you inherently sort of like end up in politics. And we wanted to start a film talking about people and sort of like tap into people's humanity and empathy. Um, and so yeah, so we're that's definitely what we're hoping the film will do mm -hmm. so we're in talks right now with the educational distributor to get the film into uh schools and libraries um so that should hope it hopefully happen next year and then we're also starting to put together um a community screening series uh so there's a couple of organizations uh in the bay area that we're just about to finalize uh, screenings for with um we're actually going to be doing a screening at the Tenderloin Museum, which is the neighborhood where Sylvester lives uh, later this week in San Francisco. Oh, and Sylvester's okay. gonna be there along with some other folks from the neighborhood that are sort of like community leaders. And they're gonna be talking about the history of the neighborhood and how the housing and the people that live in the neighborhood have kind of shaped it. Um, and then, yeah, we're really excited to be showing in Austin and LA because those are two big cities, like you said, that this is not a, problem local to san francisco right like any any small to medium-sized city in the united states is experiencing this problem and so uh we're excited to be screening there and hopefully there'll be more screenings um that come out of those those festival screenings so yeah and um sylvester last question for you it just basically so you have you're saying it looks pretty like it's happening pretty soon you're going to be moving into uh real housing yes um where you'll be able to have dates. Yes, hopefully. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Start getting those apps ready. You know what I'm saying? Get those <laughs> apps going, those ready. profiles. You know, any any oh, another thing is I started going to a therapy class. I realized that all that stuff really happened and I've been dealing with yeah. it. So I've been on an apology tour. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, yo, I'm sorry. I, I, I wigged out on you when I was going through that stuff, you know, so... I've made good with a lot of family and friends okay. and the healing is going along good. Yeah. It, I, I, I really love these guys for being supportive. You know, it doesn't feel like I was in a film as much as I was just talking to friends who just took a lot of selfies. <laughs> 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 we forgot to mention one part though. I was on house arrest most of that time. And as soon as yeah. I got off a of house arrest, the pandemic happened a few days later. And then we yeah. were all under house arrest. And you probably yeah. felt, thank God, now everybody can know how I felt the last however many months. I was saying that yet another trend I was ahead on. 
<laughs> you gotta stop being a bad ahead of these bad trends. <laughs> you gotta find a good trend to be at the head of. Yeah, well, I think yeah. I think he's got maybe some of those too. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. this has been a delight and a real honor to talk to you both. Um, thanks for making the time, and uh, I want to catch up and find out how the new place is. So, you know, um, we'll keep in touch, and I'll uh, look forward to hearing uh, about about uh, all your success. And um, I mean, thanks. your good good luck with the the new place. Thank you, know. you so much. I, yeah. I appreciate it. You got it. Yeah. And, and good luck, Kevin, with the film, you know. Thank you. It's yeah, yeah. Called, appreciate um, it. Home is a hotel. And uh we'll put the more uh, the information about the festivals after mm -hmm. at the end here. And I'll put the trailer in at the beginning and zhuzh, zhuzh up the whole thing. It'll be great. You know. Okay. <laughs> on the cool. podcast. All right, guys. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care. Pleasure. Take care. Have a good night. You, you too. too. Bye. Bye.